So the 2014.1 update to Adobe Muse just came out, and there's another feature, another text-related feature that I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, and it might not seem too exciting, but it's really, really well done. i got to commend the Muse team for this. Uh, it's the bullets feature, the bullets and numbered list feature that they've added. And uh, to be honest, it's not, it's not the most exciting thing in the world. If you're not doing a bulleted list, then you're not going to use it. If you're not doing a numbered list, then you're not going to use it. But uh, if you do have a chance to use or create a bulleted list, uh, the tool is really fantastic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by selecting a text box over here that has some sort of bullet type of items. And uh, we've got this new bullets panel. And on this new bullets panel, we've got two buttons here. We've got a button at the top to choose bullets. And we've got a button at the top to choose numbers for a numbered list. Uh, if I just choose bullets, then it just gives me basic bullet points. If I choose numbers, then I get a numbered list in order. And as you can see here, a numbered list when talking about numbers isn't the most appealing thing in the world. So I'm just going to do a bulleted list for this example. It keeps it cleaner. Uh, and what you'll find is next to the numbered list and the bulleted list, there are these little disclosure triangles that fly out with an extra menu. With the numbered list, you get to choose a style of numbering. With the bullets, you actually get to choose a type of bullet. And what you'll notice is there are a bunch of blank boxes here. We don't have a lot of bullet styles to choose from, but what we do have at the bottom is a new character button to add our own choices. So when we choose new character, it's going to come up and it's going to show us the different bullet styles for the selected font. And when I say for the selected font, I mean for the font that's already in that text box. Now the really cool thing is you can switch the font up here. You don't have to use bullets for the font that the text is written in. As an example here, I've got the Icon Megapack web font installed, and if I switch to that, and I go up here where it says bullets and I say entire font, I have all 458 icons available to uh, use as bullet points. So um, as an example, let me just choose this little arrow icon. And I'll hit OK. And it adds this gigantic arrow icon here. So let's look at our other options. So it kind of didn't understand how big I wanted it to be. It didn't understand uh, a number of things here. But uh, you can see your first option is the size of the bullets and by default it's set on auto and auto means match the size of the font of the written text so that's not working in my case I'm gonna go down to uh, let's do 12 12 looks much much better and if they didn't line up just right uh, I can also fix those sorts of things here so you'll notice there's some spacing to the left of my bullets there's some spacing to the right of my bullets there's more space over here on the left less space over here on the right uh, so I can even that stuff out and what you'll find is the very first option here is the spacing between the bullets and the text next to the bullets. So I'm going to keep that kind of tight. I'm going to leave it at 8 pixels. And right below that, we have the spacing before the bullet. So I can lower that and kind of push this back over where it came from. Now you'll notice that the spacing right about here looks pretty even. Yet this has 8 and this has 24. Uh, this is 8 pixels in between the bullet and the text. This is 24 pixels on the right hand side of the bullets relative to the edge of the text box. Meaning if I bring it all the way down to zero, see it's the right hand side of the bullets that's at zero. So it actually needs to be a positive number for it to push back in to the boundaries of the text box. So that's, that's kind of weird, uh, but that, that's just how it's been done here. Now the one that's kind of off to the right is the vertical alignment of the bullet, so I can nudge it up or nudge it down. Oftentimes things don't line up by default exactly the way you want them. This happens to actually line up pretty nicely, so let me just give myself a little more space because I'm about to tab one of these inward. Uh, but this lines up pretty nicely, so I think I'm happy with that. The other really cool thing is above that, I know I just went in a circle, but above that we have the color of the bullet itself. So your bullet does not have to be the same color as the text. So here I've got my RGB sliders. I can click this little icon in the corner and get myself HSB sliders for hue, saturation, and brightness. I think that's a little easier to work with. And I can bring the brightness of those down. I can make them kind of dark and incognito so they don't jump out so much and steal uh, attention away from the, the written points themselves. So that's really cool that you can actually change the color of the bullet separate from the text and it's doing it all at once. It's really a time saver. Uh, so now that I've got my color set, let's jump down here to where it says hide bullet. 
Now for hide bullet, I'm gonna wanna click in and be on a line of text. So for example, your 12 baths. Let's say I wanted it to say eight bedrooms, 12 baths as sort of one bullet point. I didn't want a second bullet here. I could just check the hide bullet option while I'm on that line of text. I don't even have to highlight the whole line of text. Uh, now another thing that you can do, and some of you might already be familiar with this, uh, I'm gonna hit delete to go back up a line. Now return adds a bullet because return is also known as a paragraph break. It's gonna start a new paragraph and a new paragraph in a bulleted list adds a new bullet. Now if you hold the shift key when you hit return, that adds a new line to the same paragraph and with bullets, that adds a new line to the same bullet point. So without having to use the show or hide bullet, you can use shift return to go down on one bullet point and you can continue typing underneath that bullet point. So that's a pretty neat way of uh, elaborating on a bullet point without having to go back and forth between the bullets panel. It also takes into consideration your before and after paragraph spacing, which you'll find on the text tab. So for example, if I highlight all this and I crank up the after paragraph spacing, you'll notice the gap did not widen uh, between this line and this line because I did shift return and shift return considers them the same paragraph and it's only adding spacing after the paragraphs end. So that's, a, that's another reason to use shift return instead of using hide bullet if you're trying to consolidate several points of information or several lines of text on one bullet point. So that's really what the bullets are all about. But there's another feature here, and that's the ability to add hierarchy to your bulleted list. So over here in the top right corner, we've really come full circle now. In the top right corner, it says increase list, <laughs> I'm sorry, increase list indent. For some reason, it's a tongue twister for me. So I'll hit this button. It's also the same as hitting the tab key. And you'll notice I get a different bullet style. So this bullet style has to do with what level of the outline we're talking about. So if I go in a level, I can go in and customize a different bullet. So I'll choose uh, my icon mega pack web font and I'll go in and choose a different character here. Let me add another character from the entire font. Uh, I'll do this little swooshy arrow. I'll hit OK. Notice it's back to uh, like a fresh start with adding this style of bullet. Uh, so I'm going to want to make it smaller instead of auto. I'll probably go with, uh, I'll do 11. I'll set my color to a darker gray. I can go even darker if I want to. I can differentiate this however I'd like. Uh, I could even go with like a green color or something like that if I wanted to jump out differently. Uh, and the idea is as I go back and forth on my indent levels, it automatically puts the appropriate bullet. And that includes down here too. So if this 10 car garage needs to get nudged over, see, it automatically gave me that bullet. So if you invest a lot of time in creating a bullet style, uh, a bullet style that has hierarchy associated with it, then you get to go to the bullet styles panel and you get to create yourself a saved bullet style, which you can then apply later in the document. So that way everything matches. So we've got a bullets panel and we have a bullets styles panel that works a lot like uh, paragraph styles or character styles, uh, more like paragraph styles. Uh, but that's the idea is that you can create these custom bullets, you can style them very, very nicely, uh, and they save a ton of time. If used properly, they can save a ton of time. So uh, I hope this saves you guys a lot of time. If you guys want to get these icons in there, uh, head to museresources.com, find the icon mega pack web font. It's brand spanking new, uh, and it allows you to drop in 458 vector icon glyphs uh, that will remain built into Adobe Muse once you get them installed. So it's really, really cool. It saves a ton of time. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. If you do, please stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will have more cool stuff coming soon.